chapter 11, verse 7. Now, we can either read this the old people way, or we can read this the teen way. The teen way is I read the first word, you read the second. I read the third, you read the fourth. You got it? And we include punctuations. So here we go. You ready? Ecclesiastes 11, 7. We'll, we'll do a test run on verse number 7. Are you ready? Truly, light, sweet, and pleasant, it, for eyes, behold, sun. Okay, I feel sorry for your English teachers. Um, unless you have an NIV. <laughs> what is one dot over the other? It is called a semicolon. I can hear a semicolon from over here. And uh, it's like this, I'm just a ball player, and uh, so who needs school? Ecclesiastes 11, 7, truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing, for it is the it, for it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Verse 8, are you ready? But, a, lip, ears, and, did you say semicolon again? Oh, help us. But, a, forget it. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all. Once you notice the wording here, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Rejoice, O man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Once you go back and look at the context here. He said, as a young man in your youth, the Bible says, let your heart cheer you. Walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. So you're living right now. The Bible says, know this, that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So there is no idle action. There is no downtime. That is not one day going to be put under the microscope of God's judgment. Now, when we get to verse number 10, it says this. Therefore, remove from thy heart and put away from thy flesh. Remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Simply what that means is, is that one, is going to go quick. Two... It truly, when you sum it all up, it is a vain thing. It is something that you simply look at, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time in life that you've lived. But there is coming a day. So, so I want to talk to you just on this thought out of there. This is the very first two words of verse 10. Therefore, remove. Therefore, remove. Now, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, there is no doubt that you have brought us together in this place. And I, I praise God for this place. I praise God for the churches represented. And thank you that uh, I get to be among friends for uh, these days. And thank you for the, for the young people and chaperones from Longview that I get to uh, take a trip with them. And Lord, I pray that the, 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 the text today, the, uh, the spiritual lesson we're going to get from this, will absolutely be something that all of us can apply, but especially the young people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May be seated. Solomon, the book of Proverbs, and the book of Ecclesiastes. Those two books, and, and if you would, just kind of get settled in and give me your attention, and I will not be long. The book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes. Proverbs was written by Solomon to his son. So it was written, if you will, at the prime of his life. It was written, I, I need a senior. Give me a senior on the ball team. Who's a senior? Give me a senior. Ben. There you go. Stand right over here. And uh, can I break your ankles right now, Ben? And uh, Ben's been making, mm, I don't want to talk about it, Ben. And uh, so hold that, hold the basketball out there. This, is that too heavy for you? Okay, this is a basketball. Okay, all right. Ten bucks if you can palm it right now and turn it over without dropping it. Do you want me? You want me to have a girl come show you how to do it? Okay. Oh, so. Ben's gonna represent. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Ben's gonna represent the prime that Solomon was in. Young people, you don't know this right now, but this is the best time of your life that you will ever live. 
after this and after you turn the tassel, you're not going to hold out hold it. After you turn the tassel, you enter into the world of responsibility. Right now you have an identity and you know what to look forward to. If you're a seventh grader, you know to look forward to being an eighth grader. If you pass. If you're an eighth grader, you get to look forward to being a ninth grader. If you're a ninth grader, 10th, 11th, and 12th. So right now is the best time. Your world is set. You have your summer. You have the beginning of school. You have holiday break. You have spring break. You have the end of Your world is set. This is. So Solomon, in the book of Proverbs, he's at the prime of his life. He is truly where he needs to be. However, in Ecclesiastes, that is not the place. That is not the, that, that is not the case. In Ecclesiastes, He's at the old man state. He's at the old man state. I mean, he's old. He's decrepit. He has a hard time getting out of bed. He takes a lot of medicine. Somebody's got to push him around. Brother Griffin, could I get you to come and uh, come sit in the chair, brother, right up here? You knew that was coming, brother. Come on. Come on. Sit right up there. There you go. Somebody help that elderly man. And I got to tell you the story while Oh, he's going to do it. Look at him. He's going to roll. <laughs> it's a smart man right there. So their principal is Brother Ross Kelly. And uh, and so I was uh, preaching up there. Thank you, Brother. Anytime I can give you a good seat. Uh, and I was preaching up there several, several years ago. And Brother Ross Kelly was taking me to the uh, airport. And so Brother Ross Kelly said, do those stories really happen to you? And I said, no, no, they really happen. And he goes, do they really happen? I said, yes, they really happen. He goes, in essence, what he was saying was, one, you're a liar, because I don't believe that they really happen. And number two, I, I wish I could be there when they happen. And I, so he took me, we check, we're checking in, and, and the man standing behind the, uh, the uh, counter, he's doing this, he's putting the tickets in, Brother Ross Kelly standing there, said, sir, look, I will do your way if you'll upgrade me to first class. He goes, you're on. Pushed a couple buttons at that, and he gave it to me. He said, my husband and I get married next month. I was like, I'm not that kind of preacher. I don't do that kind of wedding. So anyway, so anyway, so I, I almost did that kind of wedding. No, I, no, I didn't. So, so, so the Bible says that the book of Proverbs is, is when he's young. But the book of Ecclesiastes is when he's old. And here's what an old man said. Sitting at the end of his life as he looked back at the prime of his life and he said this Young people listen to me Enjoy life Walk in the cheer of thy heart Live life Don't live it with this depressed old people mentality Wake up every day Live life Love life Be who you are. If you're 13, be 13. The reason you have people around you that love taking these kind of trips is for one reason. Y'all are funny. And y'all make memories. And you do things that nobody else will get through life. But you will meet each other years from right now. And all you have to say is one word and everybody starts laughing. Why? Because it triggers this memory. This is how it is supposed to be. It is supposed to be a time of love. It is supposed to be a time of joy. You should be able to love life because the old man Solomon said this. Look, walk in the cheer of thine heart. Walk in the light of thine eyes. Walk and live life and love life. And if you'll notice here, if you'll go back, he says this in verse number 7. Truly the light is sweet. Are you there? Ecclesiastes 11, 7. Look at it. Truly the light is sweet. And a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Then he goes on to verse number eight. But if a man. Now he puts a proposition out here. But can I tell you honestly it is reality. But if a man shall live many years and rejoice in them all. Let him remember the days of darkness for they shall be many. Young people listen to this. There is coming a day when you will have days of darkness. Now that does not mean evil. It just means there are days when you'll be completely alone. There are days when you think your world's falling apart. There are days as a parent coming down the road that you absolutely will think to yourself, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to call. 
I don't have this and I don't have this and the pressures are hitting here. And the old man is saying, if you don't listen to this as you're a young person, there is coming a day. The days will be made. You make it out of a teenage year without dying. You will live days in darkness. There will be days. And, and you think right now that you will always have your friends around you. You will not always have your friends around you. You will live more days without your friends than you ever thought of living with your friends. In those days, you ask any adult, those days you can't even describe. And sometimes you don't give your mom and dad a break. And sometimes teenagers say, well, why is my mom so out of control? And why is my dad so grouchy? It's because they're in those days. The pressure of parenthood and the pressure of making sure that you have what you need is a huge pressure. So the old man is looking back at his youth and looking back when he was at the prime of his life. And he's saying this, look, you're going to live many days of darkness. And as you live those many days, and here's what I want to get across because we need to bring it to a close. Are you ready? He was saying that the bad experience today can create bad memories for your this age. Or the good memories you make today will create a happy old person. If you are this way now, what are you going to be like when you're old? Have you ever met an old person that was like a grouch? You know, have you ever met an old person that you were like, you get everything you deserve? Somebody needs to wheel you into a closet, shut the door, and walk away. There are those kind of, but if you are hard to get along with right now, and you don't love life right now, and it's all about you right now, and you only have one friend because you burnt all these bridges and nobody wants to be with you, what are you going to be like as an old person? And the old person looks back at the young person, he says this, live life, love life, enjoy life. But then he says, if you want the secret to enjoying the journey from the prime of who you are to the old person you're going to become. That's why we get to the last verse. Here it is. You ready? He said this, verse number 10. Therefore, what's the next word, please? Remove. Therefore, what? Remove. There are two things listed here that if you will constantly take them out of your life, then you will create good memories. But if you leave these in your life, get ready. You will have a miserable existence as an adult. I love life. No. I enjoy life. And I'm going to tell you why. Because somebody took me to this verse when I was 17 years of age. And they said this, Bob, you're either going to be a terrible old person that nobody likes. And your kids and your grandkids won't want to be around or you're going to be a happy man. He said, now live life, but always keep these two things gone from who you are. Two things, are you ready? First is this, therefore remove, what's the first one please? Sorrow from thy heart. Now young people, when you're at this age, and I'm gonna let Ben represent all the teenagers here, when you're at the prime of your life, it is very easy for sorrow to be dumped into your spirit, and into your heart. It is very easy for you to carry this burden to where you truly feel like this is wrong. This should not be happening to me. I don't like life right now. Why is all this, this going wrong? Why do I have, why, why, why? And you are either building up this sorrow and this anguish in your heart, which is your spirit. And that's why teenagers should be happy here, but you find them very depressed and very sullen. And they don't like, they, 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 they're not expressive. They're not, joy listen to this. God never made you to be a wooden Indian and God never made you to sit there like a piece of wood. God put joy in you and there should be happiness in you. They were playing music before we got started uh, in this auditorium and uh, there was one certain young lady walking around and, uh, and she was in here and, and uh, what is your name? It's, uh, Becky? And Becky's walking around and she didn't think anybody was watching her and I, I think it was singing How Great Thou Art or no, something like that. And Becky is just singing to the top of her lungs. And she thought that she was auditioning for the next special up here. And she was just singing, walking through there. And I'm over here going, 
Now that's pretty cool right there. You know what? If you didn't have the peer pressure around you, you'd be funny. If you didn't have, if you were convinced that people would like you for you, you would lighten up. But teenagers take life so serious. Why? You've got one world to live in and you only have six years to live in it. And the, the old man Solomon said this, you listen to me, if you want to squeeze the most out of life, remove sorrow from your heart. Live every day. Squeeze it out. This is the time. Make the memories now because there is coming a day when you'll have to walk alone and the only thing you're going to have are these days when you laugh and these days when you had a good time and these days when you got to take trips and you got to be together and you got to sleep in one bed. I do not understand that. Would someone please explain that to me? You know, guys are not like girls. Are y'all with me? Someone, somebody say amen on that one. Someone said the other day, don't you wish you were a girl? What? Are you serious? That's like wishing I was a Rams fan. And uh, so, oh, that hurt right there. Or a Seattle Seahawks fan. Or, but what about them boys? <laughs> They'll be at home watching the game. So, I just lost my whole train of thought right there with that depressed. You only have six years. Why do you want to spend it carrying sorrow in your heart? Because whatever you are carrying here, watch this, you are... Y'all think those are brand new, don't you? You know what's really fun about that? Look at this cool camera I have. It's a Polaroid. You hit this, and, and then you fan it like that, and then look, there you are right away. We've had that before. In fact, there was a time that was the only way you got instant, instant pictures. You can't even see yourself. You know what the difference is between when guys and girls take pictures, right? You take a picture of a guy and a girl, you take a picture of a group. The girls want to see it right away to say this. Do I need to retake it because my hair is just not right? I'm not standing with my hand high enough on my hip. And, uh, and I, I need to take it just right. Guys, look at the picture to already confirm what we already know. We look good. So, so you know, and, and then there is, this, this, is, this, is, this is crazy. But there really does exist these books called photo albums. And I know, I know. Photo album. You actually take the picture and you put it into a photo album. And one day, you in your spirit and in your mind are going to go back and you're going to flip through your teenage years. And you are either going to make memories that when you no longer embody and you no longer in energy can live life, you are either going to look back at this time and you are going to say, what a wonderful time. Or you're going to look back at this time and you're going to go, I hate that person and 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 that was a terrible trip and you remember when they did us wrong there and you remember, no, don't live that way. And if you want to live your day, live it. Live it. The only reason we have to put restrictions on teenagers is because of the spirit, not the action. Did you hear that? It is the spirit of the individual, not the action. Because you're funny. There are some things y'all do that we sit back and look and say to ourselves, somebody needs to make a rule about that. But because you are like just living life and then you go, oops, sorry about that. We can handle that. I was taking teenagers one time years ago. We had those old, old church vans, you know, the old Ford things. The door never stayed shut, right? And when, when, when a boy, and i got to be careful because he still goes to our church. But when, when he, he was a very big boy, like, like when he was a teenager, like in excess of, yeah, he was a big boy. And, and he's a junior in high school. Well, you know, the windows used to pop out like this. And then I'm driving the van, and he says these words you don't want to hear from a teenager. He goes, hey, boys, watch this. <laughs> the, the, the lock comes up. He takes the silver handle that's big. He pulls it back to him, and he decides he's going to surf the door as we turn the corner. 
Do you know what a door going around the corner with gravity with a big boy, 280 pounds in excess does? It comes off. So we turn the corner, wait, watch this, he swings out, the door breaks off. He is laying in the road with road rash with the door in his lap. And we, that was funny. And when I came back around, I just pulled up. He is sitting with this door in his lap. And I get out, and I, I'm a little bit upset, and I'm like, why? He goes, at the time, it was funny. I don't, I don't mean this the way it's about to sound, but y'all could get away with murder if you had a right spirit. The only reason that you have to lock it down is because of the attitude. And now you're not living life out of just being a teenager. Now you're living it out of this. I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm going to get them. And everything's calculated. And now it's out of spite. No adult can handle that. And nobody wants to be around that. But when you just live life, love life. And, and Solomon said that in old age. Live it. Walk in the chair by. Wake up every day say it's a great day. It's going to be a good morning. And get the stinking sorrow out of the middle of your heart. Basketball and volleyball and any athletic competition truly brings out the angst in the heart. Did you hear that? Now, I'm not saying play, play like a pansy and play rolling over and just play like, well, you know, may the best man win and I'm okay with coming in second. That's a bunch of junk. Play like you, play like you want to win. If you don't win, hit somebody with the basketball. But then don't be mad at them. You know, there are guys who play hard and they play hard and they get into it. And when they're done, they're like, I don't like coming in second. But there's no ill will in my heart. The thing, because, listen to this, you're always going to take trips and you're always going to be doing things. The difference is this. If you've got bitterness in your heart, and if you've got anger in your heart, and if you've got something going on in your heart, you'll take the trip. You just won't create good memories. You know what this is all about? This is all about, if you have to live a lot of days, do you have enough good to balance the darkness? I'm 51 years of age. I am not... <laughs> Grandpa right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not old. But I'll tell you this much. When the dark days come, that I just start laughing at the different things that have happened. Why? Because I made up my mind I'm not being angry in my spirit. Can I ask you right now, and we need to be done here in the next five minutes. Can I ask you a question? Are you ticked off about something? Have you made this trip so miserable that now you pout and you sit there and you sulk? And then you go into this self-pity state of this, of this pseudo, means fake, this fake, this fake depression? This, this, this thing that makes you go, and, and then you, you love it when people say, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> and you snuggled up in the plane and you just stare out the window. And everybody else is like, oh yeah, we're going to throw up. And you're just like. <laughs> Seriously? When you ain't got no food in the house, then stare out the window. No, no, look at this. When your husband has gotten drunk and he's whooped the snot out of you, then stare out the window. When your children are in jail and you ain't got no money, then stare out the window. But you're in the best time of your life right now. Get the anger, get the bitterness out of your heart and enjoy being a teenager. This is the best time you'll ever live. And you're either creating memories that will go into the photo book of your mind and your spirit that one day you can simply flip from page to page and be happy. Get out of your heart. But then you'll notice the order you put them in because I do need to come to a close. Look at the order you put them in. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away what? Evil. Evil from thy what? Young people, listen to what I'm about to tell you. 
If this is the spirit, this auditorium, why don't you listen? If this is our spirit, and your spirit is full of bitterness and hate, that exit sign and that exit sign and each of these exits is the door to the evil that your flesh can do. And if you don't fix your spirit now, you will get closer and closer and one day you will walk out and you will act out in your flesh what your spirit has always been. Here's the problem. You can hate me and it not injure me. It only injures you. You can be bitter against authority and it doesn't hurt your authority. It only hurts you right now. But the older you get, if you don't fix your spirit and you don't fix your heart, you will walk through the door and then you'll live out in the flesh how you've been in your heart all this time. How many of you parents would agree with me, chaperones? Is that not our greatest fear? Why do you think we take you to preaching and you hear sermons over and over and over and over and over again? Here's why. Because maybe at one sermon, maybe something will fix it in your heart. Maybe you'll get it right. Why? Because there's coming a day when there is no restraint on the flesh. And if you don't have it fixed now, then you will equal in your living in the flesh how you feel in your heart. And if you got any anger or bitterness, then it makes you do, listen to this, the opposite of everything about the people you hate. I'm done with this story. Thank you, Brother Griffin. Thank you, Ben. Some of you think you're truly the exception. Don't, don't let him fool you. That's the last man I want to get into a fight with. He fights dirty. <laughs> Some teenage, not you, because I don't, I don't necessarily know your wife, so I'm not going to preach to you. I'm going to preach at you. There are some teenagers that they truly think, here's their thought. I'm going to prove you wrong. And I'm going to go out there and live how you have preached against all these years. And I'm going to prove to you that I am the real deal. And you tell us that people go out there and drink it up. And people that go out there and party their life. And people who don't go to church. And you've listened to all these things. And I'm going to prove to you when I turn 18 that I can go do those things and still be a good Christian. I was doing a funeral not too long ago. Two years ago. For a friend. It's a private ceremony, and uh, the, the, the way the friend died was, was not very um, was not very becoming to public discussion because it just died in disgrace. And when I showed up, the, the, the family was there, and so it was very obvious this person died in disgrace. Total disgrace. And we were talking. He, he, he's laying in the casket. And we now are talking about how did he get there and die in total disgrace. I mean, young people, the type of disgrace that you cannot talk about publicly, you probably cannot even talk about it among mixed company. When it, it, it was that. So we were having to kind of tread lightly on the details of what happened to his life. His mama said something to me. She said, Bobby, I can remember when he was a teenager. He got to be about 16. He was a happy kid up until then. Then he got to be about 16, and he got mad. He never would talk to me about it. He never would let me in on the inside. He just got mad. He stayed mad, mad. And then he started living a life. On purpose, he would go do things to prove that he could live it and still have a normal life. 
He died in disgrace because nobody, please listen to this statement, nobody can live better than their spirit as an adult. Wherever your spirit's at right now, that's where your flesh will be. The only thing you're doing is you're giving it, you're giving that flesh momentum. Think in terms like this, I'm going to take a rubber band. See my rubber band? Y'all see that? Do you see the rubber band? You're, you're crazy because I don't see nothing. And uh, you see that rubber band? Watch this. Here's what's happening. If you have a bad spirit or you got anger in your heart or you just got this, this hardness, watch this. You are pulling it back. And boy, everybody's at your mercy. And everybody's your doormat right now because you can just say anything, do anything. What are you going to do? Kick me out? I'm only 15. But that rubber band's being pulled back and being pulled all the way back. And there's coming a day, watch this, that life will let go. And once it lets go, your spirit and your heart and your attitude has got so much momentum this way that once it let go, you will go, and, and this is part of helping teenagers, listen to this, you will go to the time plus two after 18 of how long you've been this way now. So let's say you're, you're, you're 18 and you have been mad in your spirit for three years. As soon as it lets go, you will then spend six years acting it out until you find out I'm miserable. The problem is in that six years, you have created addictions that will not let go of you at another six years. Then you create, y'all look at me, look at me. I have done this for 32 years next month. I am not a novice at what I'm telling you. I deal with people in the back room that things I cannot tell behind the pulpit. And, and, and that's what's happened. So, and, and, and when I charted it the past 12 years, it was a, how long were you angry as a teenager? Oh, for three years. Well, that's why you're at six years. But the problem is now you create addictions at another six years. And the problem with that is your addictions have brought about consequences. At another six years. And you won't wake up to your, your mid-40s or your 50s and you're going to wonder to yourself, what happened? Solomon told him what happened. Does anybody know what happened to Solomon at the end of his life? At the end of Solomon's life, he ended up an enemy of God. An enemy of God. The wisest man in the world. I'm begging you right now. Do not go into adulthood with anger in your heart. Or your flesh will pick up evil. And when it picks up evil, it will pick up habits. And when it picks up a habit, an addiction, you'll get consequences. And then you've got to outlive your consequences. Because consequences show up in the flesh. I've always said this. These people that are that are that 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 in their whatever, you know, they got holes everywhere from where they pierce. You have any idea what our nursing homes are gonna look like? It's gonna be like, whoa. Man, somebody make a sci-fi film out of that one. You know, and by the way, listen to this skin sags. <laughs> It wrinkles. Like, I got a, like if right now I got a tattoo on my chest that said, Bob. By the time I'm 70, it would say, Whoa. Because <laughs> it went, Ooh, ooh, that's, that's a bad sight right there. Remove sorrow and evil from your flesh. Please do that now so that when you're old, you can have good memories. Heads bowed, eyes closed.